Good day everyone, this is Professor Friday coming at you one more time. Today we're going to be solving a, well, let's use all of the important terms. Uh, this will be a second order, uh, constant coefficient, uh, non-homogeneous differential equation. So, uh, given that it's second order, constant coefficient, and just as important, this is not zero, so non-homogeneous. Anytime we want to solve a non-homogeneous differential equation, first thing that we're going to do is solve the associated homogeneous equation. The associated homogeneous equation being y double prime minus y prime plus y equals zero. So same exact thing, just without the, uh, the function of x over on the right hand side. Now throwing in a couple of polynomial differential operators, or excuse me, throwing in a couple differential operators we wind up with this, d squared y minus 2dy plus y is equal to 0. Factoring out the y gives us our polynomial differential operator for the problem. That polynomial differential operator is d squared minus 2d plus 1 is equal to, uh, excuse me, times y is equal to 0. Which factors quite nicely into d minus 1 quantity squared. Now with that in mind, this is a second degree. It is a repeated root which lets me know that there should be two linearly independent solutions when we create our fundamental solution set. Fundamental solution set, because it's d minus 1, this will involve an e to the x, <clears throat> and because it's a repeated root, we'll also see an x times e to the x in here. So your complementary solution is going to be a linear combination of these two. So that'll be c1 e to the x plus c2 x e to the x. So that right there is about half the battle. Now that just takes care of the complementary solution. We still need a particular solution. When I take a look at e to the x over 1 plus x squared, first thing I notice is that despite the fact that there's an e to the x involved, there is no annihilator for something of the form 1 over 1 plus x squared. As such, let's go ahead and point this out no annihilator. So unfortunately we can't use the techniques of annihilators in the method of undetermined coefficients. It means that instead we get to VOP it. We're going to use variation of parameters. Variation of parameters operates under the assumption that we will be taking a nonlinear combination of our complementary solution and that that will be our particular solution. Now when we do variation of parameters, a very important thing that we must remember is that we are going to avoid second derivatives of these two functions. Now the way that we do that is after we start taking derivatives, if we see a first derivative pop up, we know that um, anything involving a first derivative of these we're going to sort of set aside. So for um, the first derivative of the particular solution, we could go product rule, first times derivative of the second, plus second times derivative of the first. Now for this guy, we have a product rule inside of our product rule, so this will be first times derivative of x e to the x. That'll be first times derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first plus u2 prime times x e to the x. Hey, baby. So now we get to do this thing where we avoid second derivatives by saying let's take anything with a u1 prime in it, or a u2 prime in it, and we sort of set those aside. So we'll say let e to the x times u1 prime plus x e to the x u2 prime be equal to you are technically allowed to set this equal to whatever you want. However, I like to set it equal to something really easy looking, which is why I set it equal to zero. What this does for us is it turns our first derivative of the particular solution back into something with only two terms. Well, only two terms, I suppose, is kind of a relative term because the second term is kind of a doozy. That's. Uh, well, let's see, I suppose we could factor that into x plus 1 times e to the x. That'll probably be 
easier this way, or easier looking anyway. Now we'll take a second derivative, and after that second derivative we'll go ahead and plug it back into the original differential equation and see what we get. So once again we'll see a first times derivative of the second plus second times the derivative of the first plus the observation to make over here is that essentially every time we differentiate x times e to the x, we're going to be adding however many derivatives we've taken to the x. So first times derivative of the second, you can verify this yourselves using the product rule, plus second times the derivative of the first. All right. So now we're going to take this second derivative, this first derivative, and this original function and plug it back into the original differential equation and we'll see what we can get. So if you need to reference back to that page, please feel free to do so. I will be doing so as I'm writing this down. The original differential equation said y double prime minus 2y prime plus y is equal to e to the x over 1 plus x squared. So, the expression that we had for the second derivative was e to the x times u1 prime plus e to the x times u1 plus u2 times x plus 2 e to the x plus u2 prime times x plus 1 times e to the x. That was our expression for the second derivative minus two times our expression for the first derivative. We're going to use the expression that we got after we set those other terms equal to zero. This is just due to the fact that this will work out a little bit nicer. Plus y, the original function. So that's u1 e to the x plus u2 x e to the x. This is all supposed to be equal to e to the x over 1 plus x squared, like so. Now, if we have done this correctly, we should, should see everything that does not involve a u1 prime or a u2 prime cancel out. I also think that this is going to be a lot easier to visualize if I divide both sides of this equation by e to the x. Oh no wait, no wait, spoiler alert, that's something I'm going to do later. We'll just keep the e to the x for now. All right, let's group all of these terms together. We'll group the u1 prime terms together, the u2 prime terms together, the u1 primes together, or excuse me, the u1 terms together, and the u2 terms together. So u1 prime, scanning, scanning, is the only one. Plus u2 prime scanning. I believe this is the only one. So it'll be x plus 1 times e to the x plus. So we've accounted for those. Let's grab everything with a u1 in it. Here we have an e to the x. Here we'll have a minus 2 e to the x. And then here we have a plus e to the x. That is fantastic news. We'll do the same thing for the u2 terms. Uh, we have one right up here. This will be x plus 2 times e to the x. Oh boy. Uh, minus 2 times e to the x times x plus 1. So we'll say continued. Minus 2 e to the x times x plus 1. And then we'll have a plus x e to the x. And again, all of this is supposed to be equal to e to the x over 1 plus x squared. So the great news with all of this is e to the x minus 2 e to the x plus e to the x, those cancel. Here we'll have plus 1x minus 2x plus 1x. The x terms will cancel each other out. And then we'll have a plus 2 e to the x minus 2 e to the x. Constant terms cancel out as well. Here's what we're left with. u1 prime e to the x plus u2 prime times x plus 1 e to the x is equal to e to the x over 
1 plus x squared. Combining that with our other equation that we've already set up allows us to set up a system of equations. The system of equations associated with the variation of parameters is going to look like this. e to the x times u1 prime plus xe to the x times u2 prime is equal to zero. That's from the assumption that we made earlier to help us avoid that second derivative of u prime. Or excuse me, the second derivative of u1 and u2. And we also have what we just set up, e to the x times u1 prime plus x plus 1 e to the x u2 prime is equal to e to the x over 1 plus x squared. You are allowed to solve this system of equations using whatever technique you want. I would like to set up an augmented matrix for it so that we can make an observation. Here's e to the x, e to the x, that'll be the u1 prime column. We'll have x, e to the x, and x plus 1, e to the x. That's our u2 prime column. And we augment with 0 and e to the x over 1 plus x squared. Now, what we hopefully talked about in class is the fact that your coefficient matrix is really just the Ronskian of the two linearly independent functions from the associated homogeneous equation. Since I like that word so much, I'm going to put it down right here, Ronskian. Boom. Now, over here, what you should have is that there will be a zero up here, and then this should be just whatever your uh, non-homogeneous part of the differential equation was. We'll call that g of x. So if things have gone well, fantastic. So we need to solve this system, so we need to take the matrix down to reduced row echelon form. I'm going to start by dividing both of the rows by e to the x. Got rid of all of the e to the x's now, which is super convenient. Then I'm going to take negative 1 times the first row, add to the second row, which will put me, let's see, negative 1 plus 1, that'll be 0. Negative x plus x plus 1, that'll be 1. And then 1 over 1 plus x squared. Super. Then for my last elementary row operation, I'm going to take negative x times the second row and add to the first row for the new first row. However, I'm out of paper, so I'm going to flip over to the next page and keep writing things down. So I'm going to apply that last elementary row operation that I just said to do, and I will arrive at the following matrix. 1, 0, negative x over 1 plus x squared. 0, 1, positive 1 over 1 plus x squared. The interpretation of this from the first row, u1 prime is equal to negative x over 1 plus x squared. And u2 prime is equal to 1 over 1 plus x squared. Performing an integral of each of these is going to get us to our answers. So u1 is equal to the indefinite integral of negative x over 1 plus x squared dx. For that, you can use a u substitution, and it should not be horribly difficult for you to show that that's going to be negative one-half natural log of 1 plus x squared. I am not including the plus c because the plus c would ultimately get absorbed by the complementary solution. For u2, we're going to do the integral of 1 over 1 plus x squared dx. Hello darkness, my old friend. That's going to be an arc tangent. Again, no plus c due to the fact that the plus c term would get absorbed by the complementary solution. Now, all of this was based off of the fact that we had a nonlinear combination of our complementary solution when we started this whole process. So our particular solution is going to be u1 e to the x plus u2 x e to the x. Well, now we have u1 and u2. So our particular solution is going to be u1 times e to the x. plus u2 times x times e to the x.
writing down the complementary solution plus the particular solution is going to give us our general solution. So general solution will be our complementary solution from the first page plus our particular solution. And as soon as I wrote down plus, I was like, ah, crap, it's supposed to be minus. So we'll just rewrite it in a slightly different order. And you'll have to forgive me for that one. Or don't, you know, whatever. It's my fault. There we go. Here's our general solution for the original differential equation. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in videos soon.